We're talking about solving the galactic rotation problem. And what the galactic rotation problem essentially boils down to is this spiral shape of galaxies like the Milky Way should not still look like this. It should have distended at the ends. There should have been a lot more of this breakup, and there shouldn't be this really well-defined, almost perfect-looking spiral. Uh, there's not the mass to do that. There's not the mass to drive the outer stars uh, to keep up with the inner stars, unless there is a dark matter halo. That's the common theory, that there is a ton of this gravitationally interacting material out there way, way beyond the what we'd call the visible spiral. It, it, it goes much beyond the actual, what we would call the galaxy there. And th they say, okay, well, if there's all this dark matter mass there, that would actually account for all of the rotation because simply looking inside of the outer star's orbit, you don't have the gravitational mass to drive this. However, the math, while it works you know, again, we're talking math here. If the math works for the dark matter models, it will actually work if there is an accretion of the intergalactic medium that we cannot detect yet, or that we're still in the process of detecting, that is out there as well. And so, um, thus far, this, this idea does not hit a scientist in this community is very appealing because uh, an accretion of the intergalactic medium means you're talking about baryons, things that traditionally we have been excellent at detecting. Excellent, but not perfect. Uh, there are some things we didn't know and that we're just figuring out recently. Uh, for those of you who watch the morning news every day, you're going to recognize pretty much everything I'm going to show you here uh, coming up. But first, all right, so this accretion of the intergalactic medium, the first thing that comes to mind is the ion wind from the, the center of the galaxy, uh, the active galactic nuclei, so to speak. Um, it had once been thought then that when the, the center of a galaxy, a supermassive black hole, eats a star, that the star is either heading down into whatever happens inside uh, the event horizon, or some portion of it is blown north and south along the cosmic jets. Uh, there had certainly been the concept that some of the material, especially as it underwent spaghettification, if it was you know, on that sort of trail in like that, uh, could be blown out by some of the powerful electromagnetic offput uh, that's in the region. But at no, in no way did we think that up to 80% of this stellar material was not consumed or blown out the cosmic jets north and south, but blown out basically uh, along the equatorial regions of the galaxy and, you know, of course, a bit north and south as well. Just think of the solar wind. And so we have this problem. Uh, we, we need to look for this accretion of material. Well, it turns out that we may have a good source for it. It's up to 80% of it is just blasted back out through the galaxy. Oh, and so let's, let's compound that because we're talking about an orders of magnitude difference in ion wind flowing through the galaxy. I uh, really can't wait until Voyager 2 actually makes it out there. Um, we also found that the supermassive black holes in the centers of galaxies can eat up to a star a year. A lot more of these what material that we thought was going to be in stars or eaten by a black hole or blasted out of cosmic jets, a lot more of it getting blasted out and a higher percentage of it getting blasted out from more stars. And you start to say, well, that's, that's an orders of magnitude change in the right direction for diffuse interstellar plasma in two separate variables. That's starting to look uh, very interesting. And so uh, the simple way to say that is the active galactic nuclei disperse more plasma than we realized from many more stars than we realized in a way that could account for an accretion of the intergalactic medium. Uh, some other things we didn't know, and up there at the top, there uh, we are repeating that little paragraph where I had the word if circled earlier. If there is an accretion of the interstellar, uh, the intergalactic medium in these regions, uh, that is actually going to account for the lambda cold dark matter model. And yeah, we immediately thought ion wind interstellar plasma. And then all of a sudden, HR 47, 
0.96, the best studied dust ring of its kind. Not that that helped, uh, helped a enormous, enormous thousand AU on both sides dust belt from being hidden from us until just about a month and a half ago. The most well-studied dust ring of its kind, and we didn't know that there was this enormous dust belt. That's the photo you've got after it. Well, that's interesting. Dust seems like something that we should be able to detect. We're very good at detecting it. But it turns out, if it is diffuse enough, maybe, just maybe, we have not perfected to the godlike level our ability to detect this stuff in the reaches of the cosmos, just maybe. 